Haha, <laughs> look at the head on that one. This is, yeah, no, I'm screaming. The... Stripping. This is the pre-hopped Nova Lager. I don't even want to call this beer stud yet. Let's find out together. So, let's kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. Yes, this is a shake and brew beer. So, extract beer. This is the first time I used... Yeah, I'm still screaming. <laughs> the first time I used pre-hop DME. It was really interesting to try that out. So we'll see how that compares together. Because things are getting really simple here. If you're new to the shake and brew method, I will link down below to the entire playlist. We can go and check it out. I brewed quite some beers now, and some of you guys are hating the shake and brew. I also love all grain, but this brewing method is so easy, it's so fast, and when you don't have the time to do an all grain beer, you can still use this method for experimenting and some other ideas also, of course. But we can put out a beautiful beer with such a low amount of effort. Whilst I'm showing through this head, yes, everyone loves good head, please buy the t-shirt. You can watch the brewing footage and the recipe you can download so you can tag along. It's linked down below in the description. It's on my buy me a beer page and if you like what I do here, there's an option there to buy me a beer, but you can download it for free if you want, of course. Roll the tape. This time this will be a little bit different because we're using pre-hopped spray mold. Never done the pre-hopped. According to the package, it says 30 to 42 bitterness EBC, but we we'll see what happens. I found some sus hops also. We could add some, but I don't want to add much because I don't want my lager to be hoppy. Going for some sort of pilsner, hopefully. So I'm guessing this will be a little bit more bitter than your American lager. Trying out the Nova lager for the first time. Modern hybrid log yeast. Log yeast is already a hybrid yeast, so I don't know. And it says that this remains hot, but it has a max temperature of 20, and I have fermented lagers hotter than that. But we're gonna try it at 20 degrees Celsius, even though we're doing under pressure, because it's the first time I'm using this, and I want to stick to what the manufacturers are saying before start to push it. Tiggy, have you heard of... She doesn't even care. Normally we shake it hot for some kind of amount of time to get the bitterness, but as you're trying this pre-hop thing out, just gonna try to dissolve this. That's why we need the hot water. So 9 liter keg, this is an 8 liter batch, 1 kilo of spray mold, Going for like a normal lager, like ish, ABV beer. One liter of hot boiling water goes in. This might squirt. Oh, I'm so stupid. One liter. And I forgot my gloves today also. This is not good content, I know. Sorry. And some of you are really like hating on the shake and brew. Don't hate. And it's winter outside. It's cold as fuck. I'm not brewing outside. Normally, I would have hops in here. I said I was going to add hops, and I will, but I will wait until we get the temperature down because I don't want any more bitterness from the hops. You should have like started a clock or something, Tiggy, to see how long time this actually takes today. Hopefully, that will be dissolved. If I would like brew some sort of pill snare or something, I wouldn't add late hops addition at all. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hops here to be fancy. I had this open package. This was vacuum sealed. So let's say 15 grams of hops. What's that? Well, the doctor will convert everything into birds and stones, but I'm thinking it's half an ounce. This is low alpha acid hops. The plan was to actually add some more water before. But as usual, the doctor screws up, but it will most likely be beer. And I have not boiled this water today. Is this good content? Do you need a pressurized vessel to do the shake and brew? No, you don't. But I prefer doing pressurized fermentation. Eight liters. Am I screaming? Sorry. Always, always screaming. Okay, shake it like the doctor. Five, four, three, Let the brew explode, feel the rhythm 
of electric inhibitions erode Raise your hands up high, let your spirit ignite Shake it like the dark doll, gonna rock the night We're the wild ones, the rebels in disguise Taking chances, never compromising how we rise With every brew, every beer and every shout We're shaking the system, gotta let it all out Shake it like the doctor, we're gonna rock the night This is quite cold, because the water is really cold now, but I will heat control this. I don't use a fridge. I have an entire video on how to heat control without a fridge, and this is the same method. I've not got away from it. I do have a fridge here for controlled fermentation, but we're not doing it today. Take a sample here without spilling. This is not gonna go great. I'm so scared right now. I did it! Uh... Yeast! Getting too old for this shit. Nova Lager, never tried it. Have you brewed with Nova Lager? Let me know your results. I just brewed a Lager 25C. Both under pressure and with pressure. We'll link to that video somewhere. No, down in the description, if I remember it. And I will be using a floating pickup. I'm just lazy here today, not rehydrating, but this is supposed to be easy, so we should not complicate the shake and brew at all. And I'm actually doing a double brew day today. I will take some shortcuts also on the next one. Can we do this without spilling? No. Yes. Amazing. I'm gonna take your best guess. No? Okay. We have 1045. Doc, can you write that? Thank you. Ugh. Temperature control on this one. First I have a heating mat. Let's secure that. The sponge is isolation. Insulation. I'm using Inkbird for this one. For my other one, I will use an STC 1000. I have a review video on an Inkbird. If you want to check that one out, I will try to remember to link. I'm setting this to 20 degrees Celsius. We have some insulation also on the tiny keg. Don't need to waste any energy. Save the planet. Thought I saw your mom's strap on laying around here. Just gonna use this. Keep this in into place. Put some pressure on here just to dial in my spanning valve. I'm keeping it a little bit lower because I'm actually gonna share this spanning valve between two the rest of it because I'm doing a double brew deck. And I might want to open the other one for dry hopping. So I have a leak here. New plan. I have this other spanning valve here. Gonna use them individually instead. Dial this into round 15 PSI-ish. Now we could have gone more. I might raise it. I know I'm still screaming, sorry. I do have a full review also on the Spandit if you want to check that one out. So I'm guessing the brew day is over now, right? But before we jump over to Dr. Hans and Tiggy in the future to taste beer and run through the numbers and everything, big shout out to my patrons and channel members. I will record a dedicated BTS video. I have a beer in here. So I'm gonna try that one. Back to Dr. Hans and Tiggy in the future. Day three of fermentation. I started ramping this yesterday actually because this went super fast. So two days into fermentation, we have the 21C now. I really have nothing really to say here, but still recording because I just dry hope this one. So I want to chime in after three days fermentation. I'm going to continue to ramp up the temperature here to further speed things up, but we are almost done. So Tig, you have anything you want to know? She's already thrown in the towel. So let's jump to the doctor in the future for tasting the beer and evaluation. Ugh. Sorry, 
What a beautiful brewing footage and with an extra update there also for your viewing pleasure. And yeah, I'm trying my best here to put out some good content, but of course it does not mean that you should subscribe. My channel sucks, so please don't do that. But a nasty comment and let me know from where you're watching. I would love to hear that out. I'm from Sweden, as you might hear with my funny accent. Of course, Tiggy would like a uh, thumbs up on the video. Let's try the beer. We're gonna run through the numbers of fermentation because this is exciting. But first, let's try the beer. So if it sucks, you can click off now. Okay. Like a light, citrusy, summer beer. Cheers. The problem with, with me brewing beer is like, I'm just throwing shit together and hopes it comes out great. And it's mostly often does. And this time also, this awesome beer for such a small amount of effort. I should be brewing bigger batches. Should probably looking into like buying DME in bulk and how to handle that without like, the rest of the world being sticky. This has been conditioning for over two weeks at least. This is first time using pre-hop DME. I did add a small hint of sas hops there also, just a bit fancy, but I did add a little bit later so it won't further bitter the beer as much at least because I want to know about the pre-hop DME. But this better than much of the stuff you could buy here in Sweden. I don't really buy Swedish lagers, I buy Czech or German lagers and this is so clean. It was the first time using uh, the Nova log, I haven't really read up on it really much but I had had some suggestions from viewers that can you please try the Nova Lager? Please explain here if you know more about this yeast because I haven't really done my research here, which of course sucks, but it is what it is. It says that it's a hybrid lager yeast. To me that doesn't really make any sense because lager yeast is already a hybrid. I don't get that Weistefaner lager taste if you know what I'm talking about, which we get from the Saf Lager W3470 or Angel Yeast BF27, but definitely tastes like a lager to me. It's really clean fermented and the bitterness is, is really good. This is not a complex beer. This is really easy drinking summer beer. I'm a little bit confused by the numbers of the fermentation. I'm gonna get into that but bitterness wise, taste wise, it's definitely not a pilsner but it's more like a hellless or like a fest beer, not a, like a real Marsen or real Oktoberfest, because the original gravity was 1045, but this actually fermented down to a staggering 1003. <gasps> yes. So we're ending up with a 5.6% beer, but it's not like thin. The body is not like thin. So I'm really blown away by this. Of course, when the alcohol bumps up, like, over 5%, in this case 5.6%. We are getting extra alcohol. Extra alcohol means extra sweetness also. This is a really nice beer. And I, yes, I, I realize now, just please, you can start writing that nasty comment. Go ahead, write it. I screwed up by adding that small amount of hops. I, I already knew and I knew it all. Well, I just wanted to make it fancy or I just wanted to make it. I was afraid I was, wasn't going to give get any taste really in this beer. And as I said, it's simple, but it's still like clean, nice beer. Now I'm a beer snob, so I do. Uh, I like my beers a little bit malty maybe, a little bit hoppy and so. But what a beautiful log in such a tiny amount of effort. Maybe we should go big scale. Do you want to see a full-size shake and brew maybe? Or do we try to shake and brew in the Kikimenter? Like 50 liters of beer? We could take the Kikimenter and just roll it down the hill here. I'm sorry about Tiggy snoring, but that's the thing she does best. And if you're into beer, nah, of course you're into beer, you're here on the channel. But if you're into black lagers and all grain, check out this video, one of the best lagers I ever brewed. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Nothing do is nah. Okay, Tig is totally down with this shit. But thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Doctor Hans out. Cheers.